Welcome back, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs> Storm here. Mom here. Kimmy here. Thank you guys for requesting Oppenheimer. Yes. All three of us are blind to this. I did hear this is historically accurate. A lot of people are saying great things about it. This is by Christopher Nolan. Oh, okay. Yay. We've mm -hmm. seen quite a few films of his. Mm -hmm. We saw like Interstellar, Inception, The Dark Knight Trilogy. Oh, yes. All very good movies. And he's done a bunch of other things too that we haven't seen, which okay. we do get requests for now and again. So hopefully we'll get more of those so we yes. can see even more of his movies. Right, yeah. So we do know the Oppenheimer history, the story behind him. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to get into this. Me too. So Absolutely. shall we talk about this afterwards? We'll get right into it now? Definitely. Yes. Okay. All right. Hmm. It is he was king mm. to a rock and mm. torture for eternity. I got the audio. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that Robert Downey? <laughs> it's Robert Downey Jr. Jr. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? God, he looks so handsome. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. Wow. I was in German. I wasn't allowed to be. Are they really? Want to justify their whole life. Yeah. Have you had any sleep? Hey, hey it's Jarvis. Oh, <gasps> I know. Holy crap! Oh. He's gonna. He's the gonna apple? poison the apple. Oh. No way. Oh, wow. That's messed up. I mean, I get you were wronged, but that's not right. Yeah, that isn't right. That's outright murder. Oh. Wow. Oh. It's gone. Oh, oh it's still there. <gasps> oh, no. It's the J stand for. Get to Germany, study under Max Born, learn the ways of theory. Okay, he's giving him all this. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh. Thank oh, God. Not even phased <laughs> by it. <laughs> I wanted to do it. It's good, okay. Oh, wow. Exactly. Hopefully that's it. Can you hear it? He's trying to get it on. Oh, I know, can you imagine like, like a, such talent to yeah. have a mind like that? Yeah. Oh, cool. Good to see Einstein. That lovely. Mm. Oh. Yeah. What was that? What did you say on? Oh, he's fine. Mm. Oh. May the bull sing to us now for Delta and Anna. He's freaking dead. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, it wasn't challenging enough. Schwitz. Show off. Dutch in six weeks, but you never learn yet if you don't speak it so much my side of the park. Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Automatically, I think Walter White. <laughs> you have like this beautiful music when he starts to talk about quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together. Artistic. Hey, 
<laughs> Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> Elena. This is what scientists do. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Look, these vision pulses, they're massive. I've seen 30 of these in the past 10 minutes. Theory will take you only so far. Get experiment. Through the process. Extra neutrons boil off as you can be used to split other uranium atoms. Chain reaction. You're thinking what I'm thinking. Terrifying. Mm. I told you, Robert, no more fucking flowers. Jeez. She can't, there's no trail. I don't want anything from you. You say that and then you call. Well, don't answer. I'll always answer. Oh. Is that Papa? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger thing. Look here in a quiet place. Mm-hmm. Seems baffling. Yes, it is. I meant with your husband. Mm-hmm. Yes, you okay. did. Because mm-hmm. you know it won't make a bit of difference. Why did you marry him? I was lost and he was kind. Himself killed first time he popped his head out of the trench. Mm. That sucks. Mm. Gorgeous too. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Is she drunk? Yeah, she is. Friends, Very holy cow. Mm-hmm. That's so tough to see it in this perspective. Yeah. Ah, oh, I did it again. Yeah. Oh, 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 God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, 
Good for you for saying that. Terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not gonna let me onto this project. Oh, it falls on the just and the unjust. I don't wish the culmination of three centuries of physics to be a weapon of mass destruction. I know, mm -hmm. just a thought. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Sick name. Mm. The second thing you have to do is appoint Hans Beta to run the <laughs> Great. <laughs> so maybe he'll stay. <laughs> scientist Bruce is insisting we join. Tell Groves to go shit in his hat. <laughs> so be yourself. Only better. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. There you go. This famous hat. Famous hat. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is so crazy a town. <laughs> mm. Makes sense to make it for families to stay mm -hmm. there. Instead of uranium or plutonium, we use hydrogen. Heavy hydrogen. Deuterium. You see? We compact the atoms together under great pressure to induce a fusion reaction. Then we'll get not kilotons, but megatons. <laughs> Mm. 
Yeah. Timo, I quit. Thanks for nothing. Better off without him. Aren't you more concerned about his discretion out there? We'll have him killed. Oh, my God. I was just kidding. That was a bad joke. It's me, not America. You know, Jim. Oh, we see? We need this kid. Fix it, will ya? It wasn't a mistake. Your friend Loman and says I'm trying to unionize the radiation lab. I <gasps> promised to quit all that. Wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> she told you no fun. Yeah, she said that. Yeah. That you had to see Jean Tadlock in 1943. I love she the music. Whoa, he feels that's exposed. Why. <laughs> that's that's really hard. Mm. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh my god. She probably killed herself. Oh, I can't what see. Yeah, it's The man who gave them the power to destroy themselves, and they'll respect that. That's so scary. He felt so guilty. Okay, yeah. That's sweet. Keep hearing that. Mm -hmm. Stomping. At the AEC, that's very serious accusation. It seems so suspicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Head down. Okay. Everybody ready? No, put your head down. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right, right there. <laughs> I hope you learned something. We learned we're going to need to be a lot further away. We'll figure it out. So. If we announce it and it fails to go off, we'd scupper any yeah. chance of a Japanese surrender. Is there no way to demonstrate a bomb to Japan to provoke surrender? We intend to demonstrate it in the most unambiguous terms. Twice. Once to show the weapon's power, and a second to show that we can keep doing this until they surrender. We have a list of 12 cities to choose from. Jeez, can you imagine doing level? this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. According to my intelligence, which I cannot share with you, the 
Japanese people will not surrender under any circumstances, short of a successful and total invasion of the home islands. Many lives will be lost, American and Japanese. The use of the atomic bomb on Japanese cities will save lives. Mm. Jeez, can you imagine? Be fine. Everybody out. Yeah, no, wrong moves. Bam. Mm -hmm. Go on the night of the fifteenth. Need the weather to be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's when it comes down to a gamble. He just knows his stuff. He knows his area. He said it before, too. Yeah, near zero. Oh, boy. How near? <laughs> Zero. Would be nice. Uh, exactly, yeah, because I have to shut her. My God. I know, it's so intense. What's he going to do? Oh, where's he going? Put glasses on? Put your glasses on. He has to see it naturally. No, he's going to... My God. Incredible and so sad. <laughs> and now I have become dead. It's a shockwave. The destroyer of worlds. Oh, there it is. Oh, Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> I want to applaud. <laughs> He's such a genius. Of course. As best I can. Yes, I can. Now it's yeah. not his thing Thanks anymore. Thanks doing it. So. It's ours now. Yeah, she's always been very supportive of him. Yeah. World, but remember this day. Oh, yeah. he's hearing the yeah. Yeah. what happened. Yeah, the ramifications of what happened. He's got to get out of there. Mm. There's consequences. Mm. I'm so proud. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh, God, yeah. he's seeing yeah. the, 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 the reality. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. Mm. oh, my body. Mm. 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 Of course. Yeah, it's Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a second. It's yeah. that uh, now is our chance to secure international cooperation on uh, atomic energy, and, uh, and, and, and I'm concerned. Do you know when the Soviets are going to have?
have the bomb? I don't think I could give it. Never. Never. Mr. President, the, uh, the Russians have, have good fists. Yeah, that's naive mm -hmm. to say that. Was using the same words. Yeah, he's so offended. Maybe he did it. She was on it, like she gets it the whole time. And then you humiliated in front of Congress. But more useful than mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah he was always insulted. Yeah. Einstein too, like he was so obsessed with that. That's where we were. I made it. A simple bureaucratic procedure is Kipler's. It's up for renewal. For the great board, defense council will not. So unfair. The defense council will not. And that's legal? No mm -hmm. No reporters. No burden of proof. No burden of proof. We're not convicted. Just deny. It. Wow, to be able to manipulate the laws and stuff like that to sabotage someone. This is just how the game is played. Forgive my naivete. I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. He's such a liar. He did all of this. Oh my god. Yeah, he always makes me. <laughs> this poor guy is up against all these. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're really unfair. Yeah. That's right. Manipulating their rules so bad. Purpose of this letter is to state my opinion, based upon years of study of the available classified evidence, that more probably than not, more probably than not. Holy crap! Oh, it's all lies! Oh, jeez. Between 1929 and 1942, more probably than not, J. Oh, Robert my God. was a sufficiently hardened communist that he volunteered oh, information God, to the Soviets. Most of the scientists in this country would prefer to see Mr. Straws completely out of government. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> Draws because of his commitment to security as demonstrated in the Oppenheimer affair? No. Because Ooh. of the personal vindictiveness, he 
demonstrated against Dr. Oppenheimer. Oh, he comes out. Yes. Yeah, oh, who told on him? Oh, oh. Most scientists Papa. in this country. Oh, yeah. Dr. Oppenheimer in 1942. Hmm. I to point that out. Not clear him today uh, if I were on the commission. Good. Thank you, General. But he clearly said. Uh-huh. That's all. Well, we don't need any more information. Mm-hmm. Don't you mean through? Pardon? I think you mean through Communist Party channels, don't you? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Then would it be fair to say that this meant that by 1942 your husband had not stopped having anything to do with the Communist Party? You don't have to answer that yes or no. You can answer that any way you wish. I know that. Thank you. It's your question. <laughs> it's not properly phrased. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I do. Because I don't like your phrase having anything to do with the Communist Party because Robert never had anything to do with the Communist Party as such. I know he gave money to Spanish refugees. I know he took an intellectual interest in communist ideas. The two types of communists. Intellectual communists and you plain old regular commie. <laughs> well, I couldn't answer that one. <laughs> I couldn't be. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, he's loving God it. Damn thing. I certainly can prove that I gave the file to court. We're not in court, sir. There's no burden of proof. Uh huh. For right. those words. <laughs> Just an eye. Mm hmm. Why would he all come here to tell me? Do people need a reason to do the right thing? Oh, oh. I would. I would. Walk out of there. Yeah, what do you say? He's so paranoid too, though. At least thinks it's about him. Oh no, it's really the idea. I'm not going to go back again. Oh, oh God. Back that he has. Yeah. yeah. He shouldn't be able to badger oh, like that. Yeah, come on. Exactly. No moral scruples in 1945, plenty in 1949. Um, there were three, led by the junior senator from Massachusetts. Young guy trying to make a name for himself didn't like what you did to Oppenheimer. What's his name? Uh, Kennedy. John uh, Kennedy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, look at oh, 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 oh. See, he's so paranoid yeah. and jealous. Oh, you know, I know, it's always well, funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 fun. Uh-huh. It won't be for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's gonna <laughs> <laughs> Nope, mm-hmm. she will not shake your hand. Yeah. Here he comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's a scary <laughs> thought. Oh boy. Wow, oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. That idea alone. Mm. Oh, wow, what a movie! For the rest of his life, that's what he has Christopher to Nolan. That's right, it does. Yeah, it does. that was yeah. a great movie. movie. That was very good. Wow, well, well, that was what a lot of twists, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, was. what happened and how yes. he was exposed. You know, trying to really expose him. Shame on three you know, hours long. Him look so yeah. oh, that was well done. Yes. I'm very impressed. 
It was. I mean, the acting in this. I mean, Robert no, Downey Jr. Yes, was, was amazing. Wow. Oh, and he was like oh the God. villain, you know? Like, yeah. what a twist at the end there. Yeah, but was we saw show. that, you know, throughout where he was a jealous, paranoid guy. Like, he wanted the glory. He wanted the power. And the fact that, you know, Oppenheimer could actually, like, you know, insult him and he was insulting or him, belittle him, yeah. but it was all like in not good fun, but like it wasn't like as awful as you know Strauss was taking it. But for him to undermine him, to actually go against him in such a cheating yeah, way, right? right. And even really when he insulted like him when they were just by themselves about being, oh, you're a lowly shoe salesman. No, I'm mm-hmm. a shoe yeah. salesman. Yeah, you know, so that, that was the first him. one where we were he like, held okay, this grudge. Yeah, you know, and then again with the isotopes, you know, he was like, okay, you hit me again, Mm -hmm. you're going down somehow. And to really have that jealousy and just keep it with you that long, like to have such a grudge against someone for that long to actually screw them over. I mean, you brought him onto this project and he did a great job on what he was supposed to do. And then just to uh, screw him over at the end just because of his own pride. Right. Right. And to have oh that counsel like just that. going yes. and badgering, badgering him. constantly. Exactly. And then mm-hmm. for his counsel to have nothing because yeah. of, you know, security re- right, reasons, yeah. he can't have anything to, you know, go against. And for Rob just to keep going on him and going on why? Because Strauss hired him. He mm-hmm. was on the council. Right, yeah. 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 Because I mean, of Strauss. Yeah. That's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And it's such a scary notion to think that this guy has just all these connections. Strauss has all these connections that he can manipulate things in such a way where it's still legal but it's borderline it's really not legal but it is like it's it's really wrong what he did but he was able to screw over Oppenheimer and corner him and say what were the words they were saying like may or may not possibly like they were using all these like maybe terms that they were just accusing him of stuff that you know, was not true. It was all not true. And yes, he did take risks. Like Oppenheimer, like he's such a smart individual, like beyond normal, intelligent people. Like he's like way at the top with, you know, um, it's it's a rare thing. And he is very open-minded and he's curious about the world and learning about other people and stuff, Mm -hmm. but not... But he was never a communist. He wasn't. I mean, when he was having that secret affair with Jean, I mean, going going after, you know, years of not seeing her at all. And he still didn't want, he wanted to separate that. Yeah. He went to see Good her. Point, she yeah. asked for him. I thought there was going to be more there where she was going to really try to get something mm-hmm. out of him. But mm-hmm. no, it was just because she loved him that much. Yeah, she and really she was much. very intelligent, too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, from the start, yeah. when they were they having were really great together. They, they were, like, their minds like were, like, that. they really had chemistry mm-hmm. there. Yes, and definitely. the fact that she was having, like, sex with him, and then she brings out this book with this language <laughs> that no one can read, and then she's like, read this to me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I really thought that was going to lead yeah, to something like where she was trying to get information out of him. Yeah. You know, but it wasn't that. No, it wasn't. It was just, they were on the same level. They They understood each other. She knew where to, how to get to him. And he really appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. I really felt bad for her because, you know, she was so strong, but she had a lot of problems mentally and she was unstable and, um. Well, you know, she, she killed herself because she couldn't be with him. That's right. He told her, I can't come back to see you. And and he meant it and she knew it and she loved him so much. And she knew that, you know, okay, well. And it was hard too, because even he said he wanted more with her and she didn't want flowers. She's like, why do you answer my calls? Like she was so conflicted with her own emotions. She Mm -hmm. never knew what she wanted. She did want him, but she didn't want him, you know, like, so she was very confused in that. So he wanted to move on from that. And so when he met his wife, like, you know, he even says something to her when they first met, like, you know, um, she's not, she doesn't give enough or she, he said it better, mm-hmm. but right, you know, yeah. it, there was like no relationship there mm-hmm. and it wouldn't have worked anyways. Cause she was a communist. Um, mm-hmm. and with, with what he's doing like that would look extremely bad. Right. And, right. and that's probably well. why like the flowers and stuff like that. She doesn't want like any paper. That's what I took it as like, okay, you're getting flowers for your lover. Okay. This is, she doesn't more. want like that kind yeah. of yeah. Uh, yeah. recognition yeah. or any right. kind of yes. like, we're not in a relationship. And so I felt bad. I really felt bad for her that she killed herself. And, mm-hmm. and one of the shots that they did when we kind of assumed we saw a lot of quick shots of the bathtub and mm-hmm. the pillows or something, and then it went to a different scene that she killed herself. And then when we heard about it, 
Like, I don't know if it was in his own head or I just, like, misunderstood that. But it happened quick. So she killed herself. But there was one moment where it looked like there was a hand yes. there. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. right? I, I saw that, like, too. And I said, is that hand. his hand? Yes, like, is his, right. his mental. You know, that's, mental. What I, that's what I was kind of Maybe that I helped well her. It was, my, um, it was my hand doing this to her. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I took it as, too. It was like a dark Yeah, because I was like, did I actually see that? But it was so quick and subtle. I love that detail. And then when it came back to her really doing it, I'm like, okay, it was just yeah, yeah. his thought of him him helping her yeah. do this because of him. She's doing this. Yeah, and that's why he wanted to go see her too because he was so desperate because he felt so much guilt because he does care for her that he's like, she's going to kill herself if I don't go there. Yeah, like, really she cool. always, like, doesn't want something with me, like, doesn't want a relationship, but she does want to be with me. And mm -hmm. when, you know, and, she, and she's like, oh, well, when you call me, like, you always come. You always said you were going to come. And then she was, like, desperate and confused once he was like, well, mm -hmm. no, I can't do that anymore. So he felt really guilty about that. He knew once he left yeah. that that was going to be it. And, yeah, that really weighed hard on him. And Kitty, excuse me, his wife, like, she really understood him so much. And even though they had their issues, like oh, major she, issues. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of drinking going on. Yeah, she, she had a lot of. She um, did, you know, she's a biologist children? and yes. she had to put all that aside. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she um, you know, you know sacrificed a lot of stuff, too. Yeah. And so, she, you know, she's extremely smart, too. She understands her husband very well. Jean understood him, too. But they're all, like, really high intelligent oh, minds. Yeah, and, and not that everyone's like this, but they, they're just wired differently. They work differently. And she really understood him, even with all their problems. Like, to be domesticated, they're not like that. Like, they tried, but she was not meant to be a mother. Nobody like you can tell that. Yeah, it was really yeah. hard for her in the was, beginning. That it was, was sad. sad. It was very sad. sad. I feel yeah. bad for her. I feel totally, you know, bad for, for the children, kids. Yeah. But, you know, she didn't, you know, she, right, she had some a lot of conflicts with she that. Did, she definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so it was awful to see that, but like she understood herself though, because even though she was struggling with it, like she got like why she yeah, was she like was that. making yeah. fun of herself with That's you know right, yeah. Cavalier or whatever his name was you yeah know, with the with the friends that took the boy oh, yeah. mm -hmm. their son so. I mean, she was making fun of herself. You're like, oh, get this brat out of here or whatever. Yeah, I know, you know? always saying that and like, yeah. oh, you want to adopt. And, yeah. and then talking mm -hmm. to um, Robert, you know, she, mm -hmm. she was like, you and I, or like, we're just, or, or she kept really saying him, but she was very supportive of his mind. And like, you know, we're just different in that way. And, you know, um, I can't remember her words now, but mm -hmm. like, she was pretty much telling him that, you know, we're not really meant to be parents. Like you're meant to focus on your work. You're meant for great things. And um, so yeah. he really yeah. tried to, he really really tried to he struggled a lot but he wanted to be a dad and you could tell like he was he was like you he was know, caring um, but caring, you know, he but did he what he was yes. supposed to yeah he was removed from that um, and also i took oh, yes. it as i thought she was going to leave him and you know just leave him and have him just focus on his work and just have you know you know just really just leave him yeah and not be there at all but um no she was just really saying that you know you have to continue on with your work it's very important Mm -hmm. And she stayed with him. Yeah. And and she yeah. was so keen on what's going on. She knew that it was stress the whole time. You know, yeah, and for her yeah. to be, yes, yeah, she's drinking. Don't dismiss her, though. Okay. She's a brilliant person, too. You know, come on. She was the one that was, was most like, aware of it. Wake up, guys. Was, come on. Yeah. No one else was. She was and the then Oppenheimer's one. like, holy crap. Then he's he's reminiscing of all these things that, you know, that? he had, yeah. you know, oh, take my driver, take my car, do this, yeah. you know. And, and Nichols was in on it. We, I thought it was just him. Mm -hmm. But no, he was helping him. Yeah, That's straws. Right. He yeah. manipulated. That's he had control so of this yeah. group. And That's he right. knew how to sabotage Oppenheimer. It was awful. And even... Even with like the smartest people in the room, like you have these people interrogating you, bullying you, badgering you, and they're like saying all these words and phrasing them incorrectly. And even Kitty's saying like, well, I don't like how you phrased that. I don't like how you phrased it. There's no true answer or whatever to it because it's not properly phrased. And they're saying things to trap him and it's just awful. Yeah, and how just they because they say that. it louder and louder and louder means yeah, that, okay, yeah. they're yeah. gonna get their point across. No, Because they need to stress you out so the truth comes out, but it's not always like yeah, the truth. Yeah, and it really right, worked a little bit. I mean, his, his his thought process of what happened after the bomb went off, it was getting to him, you know, it was, yeah, you yeah. know, it was exhilarating every time you talk faster and louder, you know, and even when the people were cheering, you know, you know, thanking him for what he's done, his work yeah. that night of the bomb going off, or the bombs going off, he, 
he just couldn't he went through the speech okay mm -hmm. but yeah. internally he was just I'm out of here. I got to get out. Of here. I loved seeing that throughout this film. I mean, the casting was oh, amazing. Like I was so surprised yeah. to see so many faces we recognize, like yeah. so many very My popular God, people and even yeah. like some people that we've only seen in like um shows that aren't as popular. Mm -hmm. Like I know you noticed Jarvis yeah. early on. Jarvis. You know, like Jarvis from Agent Floki. Carter, right? Floki. You right. saw Floki from Vikings. <laughs> Floki. Um, um, of course oh, Matt yeah. Damon. Right. And the spot guy right. from uh Suicide Squad. Yeah, okay. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and he was good. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Killian Murphy. Like, he yes. was Oppenheimer. He was That's Scarecrow right. in right. Um, the Dark Knight trilogy That's and right. a few other things that we've seen. But, right. like, he was a really good That's Scarecrow. Right. And as Oppenheimer, like, I thought he was he incredible in this it. role. He was very good. Very he believable. Awesome. Yeah. And... I loved learning more about him because I heard, of course, this is based on a true story, but I heard this is so historically like accurate that like I was, of course, really paying attention to the dialogue and stuff, but I really thought he played this character very well. And I, I just like felt his compassion, like even though, you know, being so smart, sometimes you're more removed emotionally from things, but he really did care about mm -hmm. the consequences to a certain extent, you know, like he really didn't want people to die. Mm -hmm. uh, but the science, like he was hired to do this job and for the government to manipulate him or really Strauss to manipulate him um, where he was told to do all this stuff. This was his job. And then acting like this was all him from the start because he wanted power. He was greedy with and that. And it wasn't like, when you yeah, saw him else. leave, okay. you know, when he saw Groves leave with the bombs. And he went off. He's like, oh, let me go to Washington with you. And he's like, well, I have, you know. And he's like, no, you go behind. You know, he didn't. Okay. It was like, I think I even said it. I'm like, oh, he's leaving his babies. I mean, he made them. He That's His right, yeah. his brain and his, his team of um, scientists yeah, made super that. Science. And he yeah, doesn't want to, you know, he wants to make sure it's going to be okay, yeah, you know. Right. Yeah. But they, yeah. they shut him out because that his job was done. So. Yeah. Yeah, for them to try to bring it in to him, you know, him having a play of where it goes and what he has to do and, mm -hmm. you know, for them to go to Japan and have those, you know, oh, yeah. that was completely false, you know. Yeah. And he cared about people like he mm -hmm. wanted to help people and he got in trouble, you know, associating with with like communists and, you know, um, certain types of people. But, you know, he cared about people struggling and all mm -hmm. that. And we got like a lot of not even hints, but like now and again he would say something or you could just tell how he was feeling when he had to talk about the bomb and he brought it to our attention like the death destruction mm -hmm. end of the world like all these like very disturbing words that really right, made you think like wow right. i mean you know we want to protect our own we want to protect our country and to what end to what cost and it sounds like in basic terms that okay you have this ultimate weapon you're going to scare away all these enemies mm -hmm. but there's so yeah. many consequences there's so many things that sometimes oh, it's easier just to ignore or when you don't have the knowledge in front of you it's, it's easy to be like yeah we won and well yeah it could yeah, it could end up like that you know him. but be careful. it's it's really a scary idea and here he created something that killed hundreds of thousands yeah, of people like i mean and yeah. civilians it was women be. children yeah, uh, you know and yeah, you know we definitely. can even think about that now today with war i mean there's no it's it's, it's a horrible. It, it, it's a wonder that you just sit back and you say okay we won or they won or That's whatever right. But so many lives. So many innocent lives. Yes. A lot of people are so yeah. Yeah. I mean, the stories yeah. that, I mean, I know we all have heard stuff, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stories that you can, like, look up online. And I've seen a lot and of things on cable Noah, yeah, a while ago. The plane that dropped the bomb, it was a, called a Noah Gray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, thing. there's so many things to think about. I mean, here, mm -hmm. when Oppenheimer was talking to Truman, and he's like, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like I have blood on my hands and how Truman just dismissed it. Like, right. I was the one who made that call. I was very like, surprised. But yeah, it yeah, makes that. sense yeah, politically. Yeah, it's it the does. U.S. It that's doesn't right. matter. In his mind, it's the U.S. against. That's right. yeah. So the U.S. That's won right. World War II because I said, I gave yeah. the go. Right, yeah. Don't put it on your hands. It's my hand. He's like, just tough it up. Right. You know, and... Yeah, it's 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 hard to hear it, but at the end of the day, yes, he yes, approved it. Yes, what happened to Pearl Harbor? 
See, it's all hard because I don't think it's just one guy. Like, I do agree that Oppenheimer, like, unfortunately, get like, yeah, you're the one who created this bomb. You knew it was going to be used for Like, you do have blood in your hands because of it. And then, yes, the president did, too, because he was the one who made the call. And then I was going to say the guy, you know, the pilot who dropped the bomb, too. Like, you have it. And then you have have the whole team. The whole team. You have a whole team. Like, the guy that pressed the button for the trial. I mean, everybody had a role in it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, um, so, so it's really, it's really hard. I mean, um, I don't know if there's like a perfect answer to that, but yeah, yeah. like they all created this and, and that's what makes it so hard because okay. yes, you want to defend your country, but when you're killing so many innocent people that's and true. even a small group, I mean, it's so terrible to even say that to compare it, but mm-hmm. you know, you're killing a whole city. I oh, mean, wow. I mean, I can't. You, you see videos, you hear stories, and it's years just. years later, too. Look how much it affects them a year later. I know. Right. Oh, it's like, later. it's not just even in that instant. Then there's yeah. a lot oh, of suffering and right. the, the mental capacity of, oh, you know, geez. the trauma. Like, oh. you know, oh, even him describing it. Oppenheimer mm. saying a 10,000 foot, oh, you know, yeah. fire uh, plume, you know, just, I, I can't, like a tower of fire. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, you see these videos and stuff that actually live it. Holy crap, you know. And so and he has um, to live. He has to live with himself, you know, for the rest of his life. It looks like he needs, you know, he needed a lot of therapy, a lot of discussions, oh, you know, right. and because it's, you can tell it's really affecting him. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, right. you can see, like, it was years gone by, but you can really see it's he really aged, like. Oh, mentally yeah, yeah. you can just see him physically just aging and aging because yeah. this the weight is on his shoulders oh, you definitely, know yeah. there's Even so much the talent diet, i mean yes. you know so many things i want to say um but one really great thing i enjoyed about this movie we had mainly dialogue it was I want to say like 98% just all dialogue <laughs> about science that we know certain basics, like very basic <laughs> very stuff, little. but not much, you yes, know? Right, and I think Christopher Nolan does such a great job doing these like complex, like these really difficult to understand stories when it comes to like the science behind it but that's the main focus of it and to make us understand it and he did i mean the soundtrack the music the sound effects were just so good throughout this whole movie that it just say like i didn't find anything really boring but like i understood a lot what to the best of what i could understand Mm -hmm. but i understood a lot of the movie and the sound effects would pull you right back in, like oh, the different yes. vibrations and like you're hearing these reactions of the science and even the visuals. Like I love the visuals mm-hmm. with that too. Like I kept thinking it was like the atom, it was particles. It was, you know, um, you know, we were seeing like these certain displays that made me think of the universe. And they even mentioned the universe and the greatest weapon yes. or whatever of all the universe. And um, so having those like mixes of uh, different visuals of particles and stuff moving around vibrations yeah. of fusion or whatever you have like the waves going through and you hear the brrr, like it just really pulls you into that and you could just feel the power like i was always drawn mm-hmm. to that and they would get into that when they were talking about the science and another thing too that was a fun mix was when they would really start breaking down certain things on how the bomb could work the violins like the music would get very rich Mm -hmm. and it would escalate, escalate. Mm -hmm. And it was like an art form. It is in a way. So it was easier to relate to with me because I'm an artist and there's all kinds of art out there as we know, but you know, to bring in the music Mm -hmm. and the visual and, you know, to actually make it a performance in a way, discussing the science. I thought that was such a fun way to do it, yeah, to make it more yeah. interesting yes. and keep us focused Right, on like it. the symphony when he had mm-hmm. more and more students mm-hmm. in his class oh, and he would right, really, yeah. he was he was in his realm. He was, he, he, he mm-hmm. got it. Oh, he had his yeah. the whole the right orchestra people there. around him, oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And he was the conductor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I really thought that was beautifully done. Mm-hmm. And then we had so many moments during this too, where again, the music really pulled in your emotions a lot and it would turn sour sometimes. And we had a lot of violin, a lot of string instruments. Um, and a lot of times where something was a little uneasy or would turn around in a bad way, like you would hear the instruments kind of go, 
and it would get kind of screechy and I, I like out of tune a bit and um, it was it was very unsettling. I just I just love that because yeah. it just right because the scene was unsettling. You know, yeah. there was testimony that was being said, or you know, someone was being grilled on something. It was like, oh boy, this is not going to be good. Mm-hmm. And the music just followed it. Yeah. yeah. Very impressive. And just to go over um, the cast, I was trying to write down a lot of people here, but we know Robert um, Oppenheimer was Killian Murphy, of course, okay. and a very good actor, Scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Um, Jean was Florence Pugh, who yes. plays um, Yelena from Black Widow. Okay. And she was in other things, too, in mm-hmm. Marvel. Um, but, yeah, she's awesome. Uh, Louis Straws, which we were so shocked. <laughs> I was. Uh, Robert so Downey Jr. Too. He was What great. a role. I mean, yeah, was great. we love him in a lot of things. Of course, we love him as Iron Man. Okay. That's the main role we love him as. But, you know, he's he's excellent. So to play, like, this villain, and he looks so much older, I think, wow, like, what a great job. Yeah, they did a fantastic job. Like, making him yeah. look like Straws, and <laughs> that was incredible. And then Emily Blunt was uh, Kitty, you know, that was his wife. Um, Again, we love her. A Quiet Place, we really enjoy. We've seen her in a lot of other things, too. Um, And then uh, Josh Harnett, he was Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Um, I I liked his character, too. I did, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard, because I get the whole communist thing, and I I can't even imagine. Don't mix it in the school, don't. Yeah, that time, too, because, of course, the war, like, it it was, there's no tolerance for that. So that was, that was very sketchy, you know, with what Oppenheimer was doing. But I get it, like, he was very loyal to the U.S., but, yeah, that was that was rough. Um, and then Gary Oldman was Harry Truman. Yes, <laughs> yes, it took me gosh, a moment, yes. like, yeah, wait a second. That, that was good. Yes. Yeah, that was very impressive to see him. I mean, great makeup or how to, like, change mm-hmm. his look a bit to make him look like that. And then Matt Damon was That's the general. Matt Damon, yeah. Groves, I think Fabulous. his name was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we saw Jack Quaid. He like, was right? one of the scientists. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. right. yeah. And then we saw a Gustav Scar, um, Skarsgård. That's right. And that was, he? yeah, that was He's Floki. really tall. Yeah, so he I didn't realize he was that tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? I know he, he is a very, very tall, like, tall, like, tall, tall yeah. guy, yeah. Um, and then we heard the name Heisenberg, which obviously, like, mm-hmm. we, we <laughs> love Breaking Bad. We, we That's know right. of Heisenberg before Breaking Bad, <laughs> but we just know Walter White was Heisenberg. So, you know, he was... Oh, yes. You know, inspired, not inspired by him. Like, I don't know if I could say that, but, you know, him working for the Germans. And, yeah, I mean, like, hearing that, too, let me just see anyone else. Um, uh, Papa from Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, that's right, <laughs> Papa. Yeah, that's and uh, I don't know. And then I just wrote down Chicken Scratch. I can't really read my handwriting right now. But, yeah, so a lot of, like, great people in this movie. Um, so... It's a scary thought, but it's so true. And when Truman said something around, like, being ignorant or arrogant and being like, um, you know, they're not going to come up with what we got. We got the ultimate power now. And then you have Oppenheimer saying, they have brilliant physicists, too. And if not now, they're eventually going to figure it out. I mean... (laughs) He That's what know. you do. He, he should, should know. know. And and just to kind of dismiss it like, ah. And yeah, especially when you happen. had a breach, you know, from, you know, a politician afterward they found out with, with straws. I mean, anyone can breach anything to find, you know. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it they terrifying. can find out anything. They and to have like, you know, wow, you, you made this atom bomb, this insanely like impossible mm-hmm. bomb that can destroy so much. What's going to happen? What's the next step? Is there a next step? Like, I always think there's possibilities for, like, even worse down the road, I you know? I remember when I was growing up two years ago on the TV, <clears throat> they used to show about the atom bomb going off. They used to have test sites down in Arizona. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was thinking that, too, because I know they yeah. had a lot of test sites, and, big, and not yeah. until, like, the last few decades or whatever, they've been realizing, like, how bad it was yeah, and people getting exposed yeah. to radiation mm. and... You know, um, it's just horrendous. Um, and stuff like mm-hmm. you're, you're working with powers you don't fully understand and you won't even know the consequences until way down the road. So it's it's quite terrifying. Oh, so here Einstein said something about, um, I'm butchering all the quotes here, but he was like, once you have that power, you got to share it with the enemy so you don't destroy the world. And I agree to a certain extent, but I'm well, like, sometimes when you get all 
war hungry and you just, I don't know, you just hate everything, you're going to take those chances and use that power anyways. And yeah. It was like Oppenheimer said, like, you know, you have two scorpions in a jar. That's right. Yeah. You know, are you going, you really do have to tell the enemy because if you don't, okay, you can kill yourself too doing it. That's right, so yeah. it is, it's true, true. But, you know, at what point, you know, someone might go mm -hmm. off the deep end if you have a, you know, really bad dictatorship or whatever. Well, you yeah. Know, they can just Definitely. say, well, I so I don't agree with it. I don't think I don't think you should share that with the enemy because yeah, you might get someone who doesn't give a crap and is like, oh well, my religion will say that my group will survive this even if it does destroy the whole world, you know. So, but I get like trying to just go neutral and be like, okay, uh, truce because this power is going to kill everyone. That's right. You hope that people would be Scient like, oh, he's thinking yeah. scientifically, yes, yes, yes that you would everyone. be like, yeah, this is bad. You don't want to destroy the whole world because then what do you have to rule, you know? That's right. Um, but it's it's just a very disturbing, uneasy thought. Oh, it's yes. um, very overwhelming, and it's stuff that you hear about it, but like really think about it and the weight that that carries, you oh, know. Because even the people cheering, again, they don't have the knowledge yet. They just know when the bombs were dropped that yeah, the U.S. won. Look at our power. Yeah, we're number one, and they're not thinking of what actually happened. Right, and, and at that moment when he's looking at it. them and he knows, he's like, I know what I, we just did. Yeah. I know what we just yeah. did. And he's seeing the lady Ignorance like laughing awesome. and all of a sudden yeah, and she's awesome. just like, yeah. you know, crying and she's like burned mm -hmm. up. And, you know, he's so, just yeah. seeing like, no, this is, you know, I'm visualizing what's happening over there now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I liked yeah. about the movie where um, Strauss was talking to the council and it was black and white? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just looking at my That notes. was yeah. the end of it. That was the end. So that was after, you know, he was being, you know, talked to in that little conference room, that little, you know, tiny little conference room. It was mm -hmm. all after everything. So yeah. I loved that distinction. <coughs> yeah, me yeah. too. That, okay, okay, that's yeah. the end. That's the end result of him, at least, of that's Strauss. Right. You know? Yeah, because I'm, I'm so happy you brought that up because the black and white scenes were actually really neat because there was a lot of time overlap in this. We went back and forth, and this started, this movie started with Oppenheimer in that small room being mm -hmm. interrogated, and then, you know, he was narrating through that scene you know, with the past and how it all started and then like the future. And then we had a yes. lot of black and white, like, you know, uh, of the future where it was like, oh, this was in the news, like to really put us like yes, this is in the now right. where people could remember right, yeah. back to be like, okay, this actually happened almost in this way, mm -hmm. you know, in the courts or whatnot. Um, so I just, I just love um, that structure that mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan decided yeah, to yeah. work with because it was just beautifully smooth and um, easy to understand. Mm -hmm. You could tell what was the past and all that. Um, and and I loved how his aid was really. Um, like in his face, in Strauss's face, like, no, you, so you manipulated this whole thing. Yeah. Like, he was shocked. I was yeah. very worried about him, actually. I thought something was going to happen to him. I mean, he's, he's yeah. going up against a very powerful man. Yeah. And a yeah. bunch of people know about it. So how is he going to exit that room safely? But, you know, it worked out. Yeah. 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 Um, I also wanted to mention... Um, like we talked about that this was mainly dialogue for three hours and to keep your attention span, like this was well told. Oh, it was. Um, mm -hmm. The pacing was perfect. I, you know, thought like everything about it was just really well done. And there was like no computer generated. I mean, like there was no real CGI. We had a couple moments with Oppenheimer um, when he was kind of overwhelmed with everything. Like you had the twitching in the background where the thing, would, the background would get distorted. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, so so that was actually really good yeah. to see. And uh, but I love how there was hardly any, you know, uh, CGI throughout it. Um, and again, with the audio, like that was like my favorite of this mm -hmm. whole movie. Like it was so rich. And we had like sound effects of clapping that was overwhelming a lot of times. Oh, like it started yeah. off positive and then it was like too much. And then other times we had the stomping, like the aggressive, yeah, like almost yeah, positive, yeah, but gave definitely. you so much anxiety stomping. Um, so, you know, you kept, you kept having like these buildups yeah, of like, funny. oh God. And like, it's wonderful because that's what was going on in his outcome. head. You right. know, it was too much for him. Yeah. So too it was, hard. yeah, that was really excellent. Like, you know, that was really fantastically oh, wow. done, you know? Yeah. So Christopher Nolan, movies that we've seen, the Dark Knight trilogy, 
Interstellar, Inception, Dunkirk, Man of Steel. I might have missed something, oh, but Dunkirk um, too. He's yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, really good films. Um, yeah, I think he's a, an amazing director. Yeah, he, he has such we talent. Met Damon before sure I met yes. Damon, it's just so great. I, I love him too. Yeah, I know. Us. Yeah, there's so many great people in this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Interstellar, like a Christopher Nolan, like movie. That's like another favorite of mine because that was awesome, yes. and that was a complex story too, that where was. You, you're talking about the science that like you get the very basic part of it, but you know he makes it easy enough to understand. Yeah, and yeah. his own, yeah. you know, he's really good at storytelling. That's right. Yeah. So I couldn't do that, of course. <laughs> but no, he's very impressive. Um, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. I know you guys probably can like oh, fill us in on a lot of stuff we didn't talk about, but anything else you'd like to add? No, and I love oh, the actor gosh. that played Robbie. Robbie. I liked him too. I Is really, Robbie? He yeah. was really was like as a friend of Oppenheimer's, he was a true friend. Yeah. yeah. Like I felt bad about what, you know, Teller did, but I was like I was really happy that Robbie was there through thick that and thin, yeah, right down to making sure he eats, you know? That's I think that's so good. He was Jewish really a good friend from yes. New York. And, and yes, here, like, he started off really cocky and he goes into that meeting <laughs> and he's like, oh, he's talking excuse me, to the buddy next to him. And he's like, he's like, oh, don't worry. I speak really good English. So, you know, I'll, I, I'll explain things to you. And just to see Oppenheimer learn freaking Dutch in six weeks and he does it in Dutch and he's the one he doesn't understand. Like that was just so funny. Yeah, like, they were actually him. giggling at him before he even started. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, well, yeah. watch this. I know because he like, he works differently and, and he's putting himself in the zone Genius. to focus and, you know. That's right. So, I mean, to yeah, do something so mind-blowing is just so oh, cool. Funny, I mean, yeah. it is true that's talent. Right. I mean, to have that kind of intelligence. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if people who do that. I mean, like, that's just <laughs> oh, way beyond boy. normal intelligence. Yeah, so, sure. it's just very, you know, um, to have people like that. And you hope mm-hmm. that they're very mm-hmm. good, caring people because mm-hmm. that could be mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. dangerous, yeah, you know. True. So, he's a very, like, again... Oppenheimer seemed like a real caring guy, yes. mm-hmm. you know, like he That's did, you won't say questionable things, making the bomb, I mean, but, you know, he did care and he did even, you know, talk about Trinity. He kept like bringing death into it right. all the time. So yeah. he was like mindful. He was very mm-hmm. mindful about Definitely. that and he, and he did care about that and he wanted to call and he was trying to stay professional the whole time. But you could tell that he was so uneasy about the death that it would bring. Mm-hmm. But right. he knew he was doing his job, so he was trying to just focus right. on that. So, pretty incredible story. Well, it sure was. Yeah, and he was he he thought of it as you know Robbie didn't want to do it at first, but he was he brought it to him as okay, well, it's either us to do it to the Nazis at the time before Hitler died, mm-hmm. or the Nazis are going to do it to us. So what do that's Isn't that what crazy we're having this yeah, race? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Robbie's like, okay, pressure's you know, on. I mean, I mean, right. I mean, I get them making the bomb, and that's what's so terrifying because, like, you have other countries' enemies it's that are making right. this ultimate bomb they're going to use on you, right. and you got to like do it first before they can because you have to have the bigger power. And then, what do you do with that power once you have it? And will they learn it? And it, there's just so many cons, and mm. I don't know what's right, but. It does sound like, yeah, you want to have the better power, of course, so you can defend yourself. It's just scary. The whole thing is just terrifying. So please, discuss below. I want to see what you guys have to say. Very curious. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your patience because we've been sick, but we're doing a lot better now. (laughs) So we hope you guys are doing well, too. Happy New Year again. And we'll see you very soon, as always. Happy New Year. Bye, guys. Bye.